recording, we will explain Jensen's inequality. And I'll try to explain it in a very simple way that hopefully even a child can understand. Because I know that math books love, love to make things very complicated and use fancy schmancy language. And we have to know that all these mathematicians started off with understanding things very simple and concrete and then they just evolved into uh, uh, into some formality and they love to do it and other people don't understand that they think that these mathematicians were born some magical powers really everything boils down to very very simple intuitive reasoning that a child can understand so we start we'll start with a very very simple simple case that is like this. Let me say the question before I even start making graphs or pictures. Just a simple, simple question. I have two numbers, four and five. Couldn't be more simple than that, right? Four and five. Okay, one more thing. We all know there is such a concept that is called function and function we explained already is a way of assigning to a number a certain process it goes through a certain machine and something happens with that number and we will use now the function that is also very elementary and every child knows it it's called the squared function so if you put in a 4 in the machine you get out on the other side a 16. You put a 5 in the machine, you get out a 25. You can put in 4.1 in the machine and you get something out. I'll tell you in a moment. I have my calculator right here. Okay, that's why we have calculators to help us work. 4.1 and the squared button is 16.81 that's cool how about 4.5 four and a half you square it you get 20.25 okay you can play around with a calculator good so again let's I want to just focus on this four you plug in a four you get spits out a 16 you plug in a 5, you get a 25. 5 times 5. How about you plug in a 4.5? You get 20.25. Now, let me ask you a question. What is the center, the middle number, between 25 and 16? I want to know the middle. 25 is here, 16 is here. What is the center? So you can do it in the head. If you know there's nine between tw 16 and 25, there are nine numbers. Divide that in a half, you get four and a half. 16 plus four and a half is 20. Point five. Hmm. Something is either fishy or interesting. At least for me, it's interesting. What did I do now? What did I do now exactly? What am I trying to do? I'm saying something interesting here. Let's repeat again. I can take two paths. I have two roads. I'm driving in my car. And I have two roads. Either I take first the streets and then the highway, or first the highway and then the streets. Which way do I get faster to upstate New York? Here, what am I doing? Think what I'm doing. I, I start off with two numbers. I also have this function that's called squared. And I have two ways or two things that I want to do. The first way is first I would find the center of 4 or 5. And then I would square it. 
So we had 4.5 squared. The calculator tells us is 20.25. The other way is first to square the numbers and then find the center. First I make 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is 25. And then I find the center. The center of that is, as we said, 20.5. We see the second way gives us a higher center than the first way. So the question is, is this a coincidence? Is there something behind this? Or what is going on here? Can we make some rules about this? Can we build some building upon this? This is the starting point. And I'm promising you that this Jensen, wherever I don't know him personally, because uh, he died a long time ago, but this was his first thing. Every mathematician starts with some simple, simple case that he feels something is fishy here. And let's investigate it, and let's see why, and let's see why not. And that's how every all the tall buildings get built, one tiny interesting quirk that happened. This is the quirk that he saw. Now just to make this quirk a little bit more, uh, a little bit bigger or smaller or whatever, but just to widen it up, I'll give you another case. And maybe it's, uh, maybe it's, 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 um, it's easier because you don't need to work with fractions. Let's use the numbers 8 and 10. So we know the center of 8 and 10 is 9. 9 and uh, no, um, you know the way, the road that first we take the center and then we square it. So that is the center of 8 and 10 is 9. 9 times 9 is 81. Now I'll do the vice versa. First we'll square the numbers. 8 times 8 is 64. 10 times 10 is 100. And we'll take the center of 160. 64 is going to be on one side of the chart, 100 on the other side, and we'll try to take the center point. So there's 36 from 64 to 100. It's 64 plus 18, that's 82. Very close, very close. But the second way again is the one is w the winning candidate. Again, the way that first we square these two numbers, these two selected numbers. This time I chose 8 and 10 instead of 4 and 5 because I, wa I wanted to work with integers. So. <laughs> I chose 8 and 10 and I squared them so I got 64 on one side of the spectrum, 100 on the other side of the spectrum and we got 36 in between so we, d we break it in half we get 18 and we have 64 plus 18 is 74, 84, 82 we got before we got 81 so the second way again wins the race. Now, what can we? You now you can try any numbers. You don't, you know, you can try. You can try any two numbers actually, just for the fun of it, just to get convinced. And it's worth trying. I'm telling you, it math only goes into your head if you try it yourself. That's what I feel about math. You must try yourself. So please take numbers, take 13 and 17, 13 and 20, take any numbers in the world and do this process that I told you. One way should be you find the center and then you square it. The other way is you first square it and then you find the center. Thank you for listening and the next one, I don't want to exceed the limit of 10 minutes, the ne next one will go in more deeper what's happening here and how you can see what how to apply it somewhere else. Thank you for listening.